Good morning, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News, live with Tracy Kennedy. I have to thank everyone, turtleislandnews.info. I do have um, quite a few articles up for today, and, and one that I'll be diving deeply into. And there are pictures, so take a look if you get a chance. turtleislandnews.info have to thank Revolution Radio Studio A. By the way, it's supposedly their birthday today. I saw that, so happy birthday. <laughs> have to say again, um, good morning, hello, and thank you, everybody. Awake Radio Group. And Scottish Sovereigns on the Land. People, by the people. And also Wolf Spear Radio. We have something I thought was kind of cool that I wanted to start off with. I know it's a little bit New World ordery, but I really love this guy, so I wanted to give him a shout out. Six Nations actor was inducted into the Order of Canada. Order up Canaan, but nonetheless. Graham Greene, who looks so much like Gerald, you guys wouldn't even believe it. Um, Oneida of Six Nations, by the way, was selected as one of the hundred new inductees for the Order. Achievements as pioneering, versatile actor, stage and screen. I've always liked him, so I want to give a shout out. Actors Guild rewards. Well, I'm glad he's one to do this, and he's definitely done it. So there you go. If this is what you wanted, my brother, I hope you enjoyed it. Yesterday we experienced glitches in the Matrix, almost unprecedented. It started for me with um, a governmental intervention in the catch agency. They have now, um, well, they had their computers stolen when they tried to have them sent from Belgium to Italy. Not stolen, but it was opened, chipped, hard drives taken out interesting things done to it, but what the government didn't know was that Cash kind of thought this was coming, so just wanted to be able to record it and get some fingerprints on it and send it in to the authorities. <laughs> Whether or not that's going to work, I don't know. But we'll see, because they have now proven that they can make gold. They've proven their technology works. They've proven it that the people who haven't gotten the technology that they ordered from, from them, it's been stolen. Proved who stole it. All of these things are proven. There's that. And then there was all United Continental flights in the United States grounded due to temporary computer problems, or as I like to call glitches in the matrix not really to do with computer problems, let's be honest it's not there's something completely else going on because the New York Stock Exchange shut down too due to another technical glitch there have been several of these technical glitches happen that we've talked about and they're always at specific times also although we've talked about it before foreign workers around the world are suing Canadian companies for atrocities like rape, murder dismemberment yes I said dismemberment and that's just a few of the horrific allegations against Canadian mining operations in foreign countries and thanks to a landmark Ontario ruling, 
Canada's courts are set to decide whether corporations based here are culpable for the atrocities committed by their contractors thousands of miles away. <laughs> I'm only laughing because, you know, who does Canada work for? And of course people say it's the Jews trace. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not the Jews. The people in Israel are not Jewish. They're not. There's one little group of families, the same little group of families that fought for complete control of the planet after World War I. Well, World War I happened because of that. Probably every war happened because of that. They are the group of the royalty with the regalia of the new czars. Not the ancient czars who were females and it started with a Z, but the new czars who copied down to the headdresses and put boys in charge and dress them fabulously we have to see we have to admit that but this computer glitch in the matrix and of course I have articles linking to that and I'm sure people are going to jump up and down and tell you today all about it but you know what really set me off the 3.2 trillion that had been wiped away 13 times the value of the entire Greek economy in a manner of hours which pretty much attacked the poor and the middle class who invested in their own country China's economy not a surprise to me that these things are going on there was no panic, of course, in the New York shutdown. There was almost no mention about the Chinese. Massive. This is massive what happened there. But there's a reason for that. There's an absolute reason for that. There's a reason that certain countries, and if you got a chance to listen to um, our interview with the elder from Russia, one of the native people who the Russian government and the oil companies companies are actually working with instead of against. I know that's unprecedented here on Turtle Island. You will see that there are changing. There are changes here. Russia is not the bad guys, but the bad guys, to me anyway, are fairly obvious. Now, I've told you guys before, and we will most likely be going longer today, if you care to join me, it will be broadcast on turtleislandnews.info. Greek was, Greece was never a big deal. What's happening now? And I do have to answer a couple things that are going on several messages from our melanin dominant brothers who said I have not been hitting it hard enough lately so we don't want the boys to think I'm too gentle do we hopefully you'll like this one because the slavery on this planet we can call it the second civil war in the United States if you want, but this is going worldwide. Organized domestic terrorism specifically targeted against black people. That's pretty much worldwide. Now, the face of evil that creepy little what was his name Dylan Storm as in Stormtrooper that was interesting last name Roof pictures of him showing up 
standing in front of a swamp. It's interesting these pictures show up after an incident, but target it properly because it, it showed up in front of a specific swamp that had been used for generations by the KKK and white citizenry leagues to dump bodies of black murdered victims. The flag that they showed on top of Ruth's jacket was an apartheid flag. That's the first one that showed up of South Africa, dating back to 1928, which the country replaced in 1994 after the end of apartheid, allegedly. Initial reports from the scene said that a 21-year-old white male suspect had carried out a mass execution inside a historical black church, Charleston, South Carolina. And indeed, at some time before 9 p.m. Wednesday, June 18th, 2015, 21-year-old soulless creature, Dion Roof, out of Lexington, South Carolina, on a mission of secret work, had executed nine black women and men with a high caliber 45 Glock 41. Um, Glock 4L, most likely, but 41 is probably close enough. Inside Denmark, Vassy's historic Emmanuel Aim Church that happens to be right downtown. Hold that in your mind. It is right downtown. Roof was able to shoot victims multiple times, exterminate nine black lives at a 100% kill rate, reload his weapon at least five times, casually pass time to talk, to the parishioners, told one of them to spread the word about white supremacy, second civil war terrorism against black people, then walk away, get into his car, and drive away from the scene. Roof's second flag that he was shown with, that just seemed to miraculously appear, she used to wreck to represent an unrecognized state of Rhodesia, Cecil Rhodes. From 1968 through 1979, after the former British col colony of South Rhodesia fractured and a white majority attempted to take control of that country, an ensuing civil war ended 1979. How did they know for certain that the white male murder suspect was indeed 21 years old? The church was built 19th century, echoes from rounds from 45 caliber weapon should have been heard throughout the church, one would think. Does it seem reasonable to believe that nobody inside that church seemed to own a cell phone to call police to report a shooting in progress right downtown. Does it seem plausible in a large major metropolitan city with national and local heightened terrorist alerts and outrageously expensive anti-terrorist training, preparation, equipment and such that police would arrive in force after all the killing had been done right in the heart of a city. I would say no. They want us to believe that the murder suspect slew nine black people then nonchalantly drove out of the city limits out of state actually in the same car that he drove to the scene bearing um, unique calling card license plates and and a lone female florist in North Carolina not the police 
was the primary party responsible for his apprehension. He's a loner, yet somebody seems to be taking pictures to set him up as a lone nut assassin. So another Facebook picture, and I'm sure you've seen these ones. I didn't put these ones up because I, I know this has gotten, been gotten over, but not the way I'm going to be hitting it for our brothers today. It shows Roof sitting on the ho hood of his car with his legs straddling a license plate saying Confederate States of America. They knew who this homegrown white supremacist, domestic terrorist, was all along. We are the ones lost in the fog, caught like a deer in the headlights, unprepared to know the people who have made black people the enemy, that can just walk into a black church or school any school in America armed blow our beloved elders women children away forgiveness has its proper place but the national debate should be primarily focused on protecting our elders our children self-preservation and this goes put in whatever place you live in right now because if you're not seeing this going on, they can't help you. Anyway, and defense from unprovoked attacks, secret racist campaign of bloodshed, warfare, especially on a certain group of people. Now, South Carolina is just a tipping point. The dog god. The horned beast. The bovine. Baal. Baal. Damned. And Obama's illusionary grace. This is the second civil war. And it is targeted. But it's not just in the United States, it's worldwide. This is on now. It's already on. We can't pretend closing our eyes and thinking happy thoughts will not make this go away. Now Friday, June 26, 2015, turned out to be an absolutely surreal day. Like being in the shroud of shadows mode, which I will go into later. In and out of the 20th century, technological and psychological warfare is reality. And I am sure that a lot of ink will be spread for quite some time on the events that unfolded June 26th. But not enough, really. Because on the eve of the President, Obama in this case, addressing the evil of white supremacy and racism in South Carolina, a covert U.S. foreign counterintelligence force like ISIL, ISIL unleashed a reign of murder and terror across three continents. In Sos, Tunisia, gunmen massacred at least 38 mostly white British tourists wounded at least 39 others. In France, a man stormed an American-owned chemical plant, decapitated one person, apparently tried to blow up the facility. In Kuwait, a suicide bomber blew himself up inside a mosque during prayers, killing at least 25 Shiite worshippers. Now this part is on the page. Now just as the world was awaiting Obama's funeral eulogy for
for the slain and right in the middle of the entire South Carolina Mother Emanuel Church mind binding ceremony experience and a national conscience reformation the US Supreme Court released its ruling that basically says that the pursuant that pursuant to the 14th amendment same-sex marriage is protected by the US Constitution don't get it twisted I'm not saying that the same-sex marriage Supreme Court ruling stole anybody's thunder Certainly not about the AMA massacre. Certainly not about America's race relations. That it has. And that's the way it was supposed to roll, though. On Saturday morning, it was all about celebration and debate of same-sex marriages, billing over front pages of everything newspapers lead story throughout most of the world the AMA massacre the long awaitment statement on what is really going on in this continent from its highest elected officials was left an afterthought but that's the way they roll the debate over race relations which is something new, by the way, in the scheme of things. And of course, I still have people sending me once a day, did you see the article where it says, um, no, we could not have come from Africa? Yeah, if you actually read the damn article, it says, yeah, there were monkey people up here. Are you a monkey person? Well, actually, being a monkey person would not be that bad because they're way smarter in the group than we are in the group <laughs> right now. I'm telling you, eight guys on a boat. Friggin', like, we may have hours, but anyway. International terrorism, Confederate flags, same sex marriages, all planned major mass population psychological warfare double blind attacks insanity without disease diversions distractions or reconstruction because <laughs> that is what the second civil war is about the events that unfolded Friday June 26th 2015 were designed to further polarize the races, overwhelm, confuse the masses. In no way President Obama could be allowed, even if he has the capacity, and I'm not saying he does, to galvanize the masses around confronting and fighting the evil of this supremacy and racism that is the rule of this planet. Second civil war against black people? It wasn't bound to happen. It didn't happen or come to pass. Obama is cheap and has illusionary grace. I have a YouTube you can watch listening to him talk. Now I knew the president, the human cyborg clone, would be low down illusionary snake in the grass, just like the Antichrist that they said was coming, that they made up so we would have a bad guy. In paying a tribute in eulogy to a slain reverend, Clement Carlos Pitney, I think, of Mother Emanuel's church. And he was up to the task. He clawed into South Carolina on his belly under the color of purple, 
Whore of Babylon by their fake book, Revelation 17.4. The corporate mass media spread that gospel that Obama's eulogy to the reverend and the slaughtered ate. The AME ate. So you're realizing what this is setting up. It's the eight ancestors and the one God myth again. Story. Story. To have been this is supposed to be Obama's greatest triumph of the president. To say that his statement on race was passionate and thunderous. And in most situations, politicians that manage to perform well earn kudos, credibility, trust of the masses. Now, according to corporate mass media and the inside political pundits, Obama's grace eulogy, triumph performance, South Carolina, earned a president the National Democratic Party good political capital. It was Obama's grace. The president delivers his single, single most accomplished rhetoric <laughs> A rhetorical performance and it's you and it's when you should watch rather than read said the Atlantic because it was another illusion in this year of Anu Lucius Lucifer the light god illusion this is the year of illusion Obama's grace was the amazing grace hymn written over 200 years ago by Reverend John Newman of the Anglican Church of the British Empire John Newman 1725 to 1807 was a middle passage so African Holocaust English slave ship sailor later a traitor and captain of slave ships and Duke Argyle and African later Newton was a Freemason <laughs> surprisingly enough undoubtedly a master mason belonging to one of the Liverpool England's leading Masonic lodges on April 29th 1764 Newton received Deacon's orders was ordained as an Anglican priest June 17, 1764 and like all mainstream western churches of that age the Anglican Church Church of England agreed with the traditional view that slavery was ordained by God God said that apparently kill thy brothers yeah I remember a little passage where it says kill kill every one of those people all the women all the children even the cows it's interesting they mention cows horned god as he is but anyway to practice slavery was therefore part of the religion and to try to stop the practice was a sin when Newton wrote the hymn Amazing Grace, 1779, in England, the Anglican Church was actively involved in all aspects of the Middle Passage, African human bondage, Holocaust, and the bondage they had done all through Europe up until then. Anglicans teaches that grace, a word that means gift is God's granting the status of Christ to them not because of their efforts but because of Christ's intercession grace is a sharing in the life of Christ made available through faith manifest in the faithful 
reception of the sacraments. So Zulu rituals, eating his blood, well, drinking his blood, eating his body, Zulu African rituals, you are following African things that you don't understand, but I will move on. Classical Anglican teaches that we are justified by faith alone, granted into the body of Christ by holy baptism, and thereby adopted by God, adopted by God. Father, as sons, as daughters, the grace understood and practiced by Newton, by the Church of England, in Amazing Grace, didn't include Africans, didn't include a whole bunch of people. And it was based on its inception, on the British Anglo-Saxon supremacy movement. Among all men, they anointed themselves exclusively the divine sons and daughter of God. Well, you know, they can keep their goot to themselves. I'm all for that. But anyway, it is their chief grace. It is their chief forgiveness. And by the grace of God for all their wages of absolute evil and slavery, it wipes them clean for all the murders, all the rapes, all the enslavements, all the plunder of Mother Africa and everywhere they've touched. It is the grace without price for the crime against nature is why grace is enough. Grace without cost for crimes against humanity. Grace without shame. Grace without justice. One of the reasons why black people have always been moved and mesmerized by amazing grace for decades is that it is coded with the pentatonic scale. This is how deep this goes. It's why I like it. It's why you probably like it. It's why we all sing it and we know who made this song. We still do. The pentatonic scale, this scale, was first called the slave scale. As most black spirituals are comprised, composed using only the black notes on the keyboard. And again, that goes into the 88, just using the black, right? Using the primer material, so using the black matter rather than the white matter. But typical black spirituals are called sacred healing energy, melodies, harmony, sounds, vibrations, rhythm from ancient Kemet, from al Bulan, from temples, from structures, from the beating of our heart. Particularly after the Crusades, Westerners gained unprecedented entry into Kemet, into, at that point in Africa, it was called Africa, their monasteries, their temples to study, to learn, to steal. And they took certain melodies, took certain harmonies, took certain scales home to exploit, to create a great deal of European classical music and hymns. It has been, had not been any divine intervention here that took a twisted wreck like Reverend Newton out of the business of human blood, flesh, suffering. It was a stroke. He did not become enlightened, guys. He had a stroke, 1754, that he gave up slave trading after the stroke. But he continued to invest 
in all slaving operations worldwide. And no, he wasn't a Jew, so don't be saying it was a Jew. It was not. And I'm quite sure that Reverend John Newton found the grace of God a sweet sound. And I am absolutely amazing grace <laughs> that you can pick up at any supermarket like a loaf of bread if you are an Anglo-Saxon of the British Empire Obama's grace statement on race was nothing more than a grand illusion veiled in affirmation and keywords and notes and tones of the white supremacy and the racism and when I say white, and we've gone over that before, if they don't think you're white people, if you're listening to me, you are not one of those guys. You're not. Your people have been used, I'm absolutely sure. But you are not one of these guys. These guys don't listen to shows like me. They're too busy, busy having a margarita somewhere, getting their toes licked by some five-year-old or something. But anyway, at the heart of Obama's grace, that he deliberately chose in the area, era of John Newton, are the dangerous underlying notions of John Calvin's racial theoretical dogma. Calvin, 1509-1564. Now this is around the time when they added the thousand years. This is the time of the great mass group of people that took over everything. Now, one of the most influential Western religious figures of the last millennium is this guy. To a significant degree, Calvin's views were developed from the writing of St. Augustine. And that formed the doctoral basis of much of the modern um, Protestants Calvinism argues that by secret and special operation of Holy Spirit God's grace is poured forth but only on the elect since the extension of this grace is an act of divine power it cannot be resisted any more than the original creation could have been resisted or how we could have resisted the creative force of might of the Lord one of the cornerstones of Calvin's theology is the dogma of predestination this is the notion that consistent with its own sovereignty God before the foundation of the world predetermined who could be saved and who could be lost who would be in this view when Christ died his death was only for the elect certain Calvinists systems assert without qualification that God's intention to destroy some is equal to his detention or intention to save others based on Calvinism Dutch set settlers and the British Empire in colonial Africa claim that the blacks were members of the non-elect name them sons of Ham whom Noah cursed to be slaves according to Genesis but I've read you the passage when Noah's father looked at him and wanted to kill him anyway when Obama said Ruth didn't know he was being used by God a chill went up my spine 
I lost my darn mind, and apparently I was the only one to catch that. How can I be the only one to catch that? But within Calvinistic systems, black people are predestined and chosen to be enslaved and destroyed by the will of God. But so are you. It doesn't matter what your shade is. If you are not one of the royal families, and of course they wrote that little thing in England about the right but that was for royalty this was for the king to treat royalty better it had nothing to do with you it was never about you you were always going to be serfs and slaves except you know they've changed it a little so it's not all stick now it's either the carrot or the stick right so now if If you're lighter color, you might not be getting all stick. You might get a little carrot. But you're going to get the stick. Sometimes too. It's just the way it is. Because you were never one of the elect. So. It would very well be that roof was indeed used by God. Under that system, roof is endowed with an everlasting grace. And forgiveness by race alone, because that's how they could talk people into going out. And I have a lovely little picture of what the British troops and the Dutch troops did. According to their dogma, yes, if they told you to kill, be bloody, be brutal. You are under the grace. Sometimes grace is enough, is it? According to that, His grace is an act of divine power that cannot be resisted, cannot be reversed, no matter what He did or what you do to protect yourself from fate. Chillingly, to me anyway, at the end of Obama eulogy, he said that Reverend Pickney and the slaughtered AME church members found that grace if the mother Emmanuel AME 9 found that grace it certainly wasn't endowed from any God I would call them they found that special kind of grace through the barrel of a 45 caliber Glock this kind of twisted Grace, African exclusion dogma that didn't die with Newt, didn't, didn't die with Calvin. It is the hymn of the slaveocracy. The antebellum self. It lies hidden in the basis of the movement of colonization all over the world. But specifically here the South's Second Civil War against black people. In 2013, the teachings of John Calvin, predestination, threatened to upend the nation's largest Protestant denomination in the Southern Baptist Convention. About 30% of the Southern Baptist pastors considered their church Calvinist according to a poll last year. No. Look at this picture. Lucifer himself and his servants would be tickled to death to join President Obama's chorus and sings and sway with that kind of amazing grace. World War II. Those boys were trained up and ready to go. 
they did the first run, the dry run of what everyone else in the world got after this. Depression indoctrination that I told you about, tried and tested and absolutely has changed the world. Tested on our, our German brothers first. But it also goes back to John F. Kennedy and his secret society speech and Freemasonry and Mystery Babylon. I have the entire thing linked up for you. But in South Carolina, goddamn. Can I say that? Okay, I won't say that. My bad. There is much more to worry about here than a freaking Confederacy battle flag flying over the Capitol. Its original state flag represents a far more everlasting danger from the secret societies than a little battle flag. There is a great deal of controversy of whether or not the president is a 32nd Prince Hall Mason. If he was, it would of course be secret. In America's current political state of affairs, it would be it would normally be virtually impossible to reach a high levels and the halls of secrecy and the brotherhood that is reached without any type of blood oath covenant of secrecy to the brotherhood. That's the way they roll at all these levels all over the world now. In Obama's grace eulogy, he talked assertively about taking down the South Carolina Confederacy battle flag. What he did not talk about was their Masonic pagan blue state flag. Older history, longer used, more important. Now the flag of the state of South Carolina has existed in some form since 1775, based on one or another of the first revolutionary flags. 1775, Colonel William Motrer, Motreri, I'm not sure, um, was asked by the Revolutionary Council of Safety to design a flag for South Carolina for the troops to use during the Revolutionary War. The Colonel is a direct implanted John D. Sir Francis Bacon Slaveocracy Platoocracy bloodline of the Scottish and the England. Now Moutrieri's design had a blue of a military uniform, so they say, and the crescent moon with the word liberty on it. There is no definite evidence that the colonel was a Freemason. I'll give you that. However, his footprints came straight out of Captain Charles Shepherd's Tavern in Colonial Charleston. The tavern was a meeting place for the subversive and the secret society of Freemasons to the Sons of Liberty. Now around 1736, Shepherd's Tavern became Solomon's Temple Number 1. So I'm thinking, mm hmm. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Okay, so one of the first Masonic lodges established in the United States. The first. The first one on this continent was actually in Canada um, by my ancestor, Joseph Brandt. And I apologize for that. You know, my bad. <laughs> what can I say? Yes, yeah, so don't call up and say, Tracy, I'm going to expose you. No, I am exposed. <laughs> anyway. 1774, the ancient Lodge of England chartered Charleston Lodge, number 190, at Shepherd's Tavern. Now, August 29, 
and 43 officers of the Continental Army residing in South Carolina met and established the Mason-like and dominated the Society of Cincinnati in South Carolina in a city tavern, Shepherd's Tavern, Shadow's Tavern, different names, in Charleston. In 1801, Supreme Council of the Scottish Reich established at Shepherd's Tavern. One of his sons, um, Dr. James Moutrary, was one of the founders of Charleston Scottish Rite Supreme Council. Now, according to the Grand Commander, Albert Pike, that we hear quite often, Dr. Moutrary was one of the foremost citizens of South Carolina, which means supremacist, which means white, which means Freemason, which means one of the old school. You know what that means. So hold that thought, and um, I'll be right back after this message, and uh, hold on to your butt, it gets heavier. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Turtle Island News with Tracy Kennedy. Um, live again, turtleislandnews.info, Revolution Radio, Studio A, Loud. Awake Radio Group, of course, and People by the People, and Will Spirit Radio. Now, I am going to finish this today. If it's not done precisely at... Um, to Eastern Standard Time, I will go a little longer, but just on Turtle Island News. Okay? So, it kind of ties in everything that we've talked about so far. Shouldn't be surprising, then, that the official state flag of South Carolina is a secret Masonic flag. It's blue because of the Blue Lodge. All Masons must undergo initiation to enter the Blue Lodge. Blue Lodges are where Freemasons meet. South Carolina has a secret Blue Lodge Mason path state from its formation. It's also Sumerian god, goddess Inanna, represented by the moon, the crescent moon. And you can see the pictures again on my page. But the crescent moon means several things. And we've talked about that before. The moon goddesses, the horned goddesses, it means fertility, of course. Abundance, of course. It is the Tsar, Z-A-R, that later became a male figure and later demonized to Lucifer. But we would not have had any time to think higher thoughts if the cow was not magnificent. This is before we just ate it or dumbed them down so that they no longer have horns or a few have horns. But they were huge animals, majestic, and they did pull the plow for us and give us milk. We could make cheese. We could make yogurt. It changed things for us. It lightened our burden. The symbol of the crescent moon never started out as anything about demons. It was about the horn. It was about abundance. It was about the cup of life. About them helping us. So, when we talk about Lucifer, no, there's two sides here. What it really means and what they've taught us it means and what they're pushing for it to mean. With me? Okay. So, South Carolina state flag, crescent moon, symbolizes the architect deity, Sin, as a matter of fact, from the Akanian, Suan, Sion, also Nana, Sumerian, Dusk Nana, or Dusky Nana, the goddess of the moon in Mesopotamia. Most of Kemetan area mythology. Nana, Sumerian deity, son of Enlil, 
and Ninlil became identified with this medic sin. Enlil, Ashtar, Asher, Asher, Yodbeo, the God of Abraham, Moses, right? Ninlil is Lilith, the first Eve, the mother. Hence the celebration of New Year's Eve. Enlil, Elias, Satan, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, is the god of the fall. We could call that the god of the separation when we were split into two. Maybe, maybe it's at a time. Maybe it's a time when we, when the religion went from female to male and they enslaved everyone. Could be a lot of things. But it's, it means something. It's a certain time. Now in all the pre-Islamic pre-Christian mythology Diana too like Venus was portrayed as beautiful youthful wearing a crescent moon as a diodem like a little um, tiara thing it was um, a major attribute for later goddesses the, Di the new Dianas but it's ancient. It's really old. Now in Roman mythology, she was the goddess of the hunt, the moon, childbirth. See, this is where I'm getting. This is this is a this is a cow. Later, they became cows. She was equated with the green, um, the Greek goddess. Artemis. Diana was worshipped ancient Rome, revered by Roman um, neo-paganism. So, you know, these things just get passed around, of course. Diana Wicca, largely female form of practice, named for her. Diana is known to be the virgin goddess, childbirth, goddess of women, again, virginity, saying parthenogenesis, and our ability to create on her own. She was one of three main goddesses Diana, Minerva Vesta who all swore never to marry but as far as we go back we, we find this goddess as the oldest one and I have, I have pictures up of her in Anna who's wearing the horn again and goddesses from all over the world that we've all portrayed the same way. I don't know if they all appeared at the same time, this feeling or this thought, or if they were all stolen and passed to each other. I don't think it matters at this point. Anyway, we all knew this. We all had the same symbols for it. And our cross-dressing rapist pedophiles are now wearing that from her. Anyway, so Colonel Mutri's interpretation of the liberty on the crescent moon of the flag is far from any notion that it applies to all such as Africans and Native Americans. Mackey's Masonic Encyclopedia, the early 20th century, the word freedom is not taken in the modern sense of liberty but rather it is a primitive Anglo-Saxon meaning frankness. So Frankish, as a matter of fact, Frankish Vikings, French royalty. Later translated to generosity, generous um, willingness to work, to perform one's duty, to be frank and earnest. You know what I mean? Just means you're going to work hard. So you can be frank and earnest and have nothing to do with freedom of we as we think of it, or liberty as we think of it. That was not for you folks. Never was meant for you folks from these people. Anyway. But that's, before I move on, we'll talk about, talk about liberty. Let's talk about sovereignty. 
there are always some slaves that you cannot beat into submission. There's always people like that. There's always. Those people are free. Anyway, masonry is a march and a struggle towards the light. Is That's what they say it is. For an individual as well as the nation, light is virtue, manliness, intelligence, liberty. That's from Pike, Dogmas and Morals. Liberty, quality, fraternity. So it's a little on um, boy on boy love buggy by the sounds of it. But anyway, Sonic motto for um, revolution since 1776 means Liber, which is Bacchus, which is Dionysus, which is Templar, which is the green man, which I've told you, which is Moses. This is Lucifer, who's never white. It's all the same guys. You see how all these stories just kind of slam into each other. But it's the God who is both, the being who is both, later called the fallen, both male and female, presumably liked males better. But anyway, liberty from God, equality with God, fraternity amongst the like-minded Gnostics who believe that they become gods. The new light and this happening in this year, this year that most of the Abrahamic religions all point to as the year of light, Lucifer, this year when the full moon is actually starting to fall on the first of the year, and that's not happened before, this is a big deal. Things are changing. Can't be an accident. So anyway, membership in the New World Order requires Luciferian initiation and the mark of the beast, which could not be a tattoo. Because as we have told you, there are people, especially royalty, will not get tattoos, will not allow the children to have tattoos, there's a reason. So it's a mark, something else, it's something else. Now, Charleston is far from being a holy city of anything you may know about. It is holy to Albert Pike's initiated. Charleston is part of America's secret Masonic initiatory chain that uses magic and rituals and knowledge in pursuit of ancient wisdom, truth, and knowledge to separate the Illuminate, Luciferian, the Brotherhood, as it looks like they are calling themselves, the Elite, from the masses for thousands of years, same guys worldwide, don't care what country they am, every time we find them, they work for the same guys. Now, as you may know, the June 17, 2015, assassination of South Carolina State Senator Rev. Kalmata C. Pickney and the Mother Emanuel AME Church Massacre in Charleston by an alleged lone wolf killer smells to high heaven. It no way seems possible that Reverend Clementa Pickney had been assassinated for any urgent reason or past political betrayal, not for the body cameras for the police, not even for that. He was as radical, revolutionary, controversial of a black man as grilled ham bacon cheese sandwich for over a century Mother Emanuel AME has been powerful 
political organization, a bastion of power, political in the South. As pastor, since 2010, this reverend occupied a very commanding position. However, first and foremost, he had been a Democrat, a member of the South Carolina State Legislature, Legislator since um, 1996. So he's kind of a fallen Democrat, which is a demon. You've got demons or reptilians. This was demon. Anyway, 2008, the South Carolina Democratic presidential primary. He had a great deal of political influence carrying the state for Senator Barack Obama over Clinton. Reverend Prickney had been a secret high-ranking politician to move in the covert circles of Barack and Michelle Obama, which we've talked about before. And if you want, just go on my page, left-hand side. You can see about this and look up X-Men. They'll say a lot. Now, he had proven to have been very loyal very loyal black Democrat. I won't say the word that came to my head. He was, though, so far down Lucifer's workshop rabbit hole that it was virtually impossible to get out of it alive. You can't leave. And it appears she became a sacrifice, a diversion for the National Party. One of the most controversial and startling movements that he made just prior to the church massacre involved Madam Hillary Rodman, so Lady Dragon Clinton. There were some sources reporting that he met with Clinton just hours before his death. Another source said that Pickney had been campaigning for her in Charleston. Another news source said that he had been fundraising for her in Charleston. I have a YouTube. That Hillary stopped in the day of the massacre and watched her issue is 666 Mark of the Beast that same day and I have a picture vengeance Satan has not yet created things like Benjamin Netanyahu says now absolutely odd startling this heartening thing about Pickney and Hillary in the Charleston connection is that Clinton presidential campaign and the National Democratic Party remain silent, will not acknowledge or own up to whether or not they even met with the young and upcoming black minister prior to the church massacre. They did, don't call Hillary the compassionless, brutal dragon lady, the American version of Madame Chiang, Chishak, without justification and I'm quite sure that Reverend Pickney got it loud and clear from the Dragon Lady that he and the powerful political elect base of the South were going to be phased out. Hillary Clinton and most likely the, Nash the entire National Democratic Party also showed up in South Carolina decked out in purple, the color of the whore, for a reverend's homecoming. They rode into town high on their horses on the cloaks of Obama's illusionary grace for black people to cash in on the slaughter of the nine dead as political capital, same as they always do. And the final hour of that kind of grace... Well, I've got a picture there. June 16th. It had been 
nearly 100 degrees in Charleston. Yet Dylan Strom Roof showed up a little after 8 p.m. for Bible study at a church wearing a heavy long sleeve, stained gray black well sweatshirt, and Timberland boots. Underneath the sweatshirt, he had on a plainly observable black bullet ploof vest. Look at the picture. Over a large white t-shirt, he parked his black Hyundai with the Confederate States of America front license plate just outside the church doors as if a parking space had been reserved for him. Dressed in battle gear, with a small black backpack on, over his shoulder, Roof asked, particularly for the pastor, without hesitation, questions or reservations from anyone, he was led by someone directly to the state senator. He sat next to Reverend Pickney. The end of the class, he pulled out the 45 Glock. They believe that Roof executed Pickney first, then Mass ex executed other members of the Bible study group with multiple shots, reloading again several times. Out of all of the people in the room, it was only 26-year-old that was spare time to try to reason with the assassin and even repeatedly move between Dylan and his aunt. There was some unknown reason why Dylan hadn't shot him in the first instance as a male threat. The drama under these circumstances is pretty strange. Now reportedly he had talked to Roof and urged him to point the gun at him, but he was told, It doesn't matter. I'm going to shoot all of you. People were shell reportedly saying, You don't have to do this. Roof replied, Yes, you are wa raping our women and taking over the country. When it came time, for uh, Taiwan's aunt, Taiwan's was the one who he actually spoke to, Susie Jackson, to be shot. He reportedly stepped in front of her, took the shot. At that time, it's uncertain who was left alive other than his mother, his little niece playing dead under a table, Dylan's, um, and Dylan's death messenger, Polly Shepard, 70 years old. What did she witness? It remains unknown. Felicia Sanders, her five-year-old granddaughter, survived lying in a pool of, of Taiwan's Sanders blood. Strangely, the details of what really went on inside that class, surrounding the other victims, when Drillin drew his gun, remains unsaid. Nobody asks. Maybe nobody cares. And from the strange and odd sequence of events reported leading up to the mass killing of nine people in a Bible class, which is apparently a big deal to you people. South Carolina State Representative Bill Chumley appeared to suggest that the massacre didn't stand the Blame the victim diversion here. Smell test. Chimley is also a member of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Additionally, Chumley, who you can see in the picture, is also one of the sponsors of the April 2015 Senate Resolution HCR 40, 47, to recognize and honor members of the Supreme Council of Sovereign Grand Inspectors General of Ancient Insected Scottish Rite Freemasonry 
upon their 151st anniversary, which is absolutely freaking chilling to me. They, the victims, could have and should have put more uh, a fight to save themselves. People sit in there and waited their turn to be shot. That's what Chumley told the CNN reporter. He went further, said, why didn't somebody, why didn't anyone do anything? I mean, you got one skinny boy shooting a gun. Know what I mean? That's him talking here. We need to, I mean, we need to take and do what we can. Well, from the strange and odd sequence of events leading to the mass killing. And this skinny person can also be suggested that there had been more than one gunman. Doors and windows were blocked prior to CIA, Monarch, MK Ultra Mind Control Programming, or they had all been drugged. Most importantly, Chumley should also ask where the 21st century multi-million dollar technologically advanced protect and serve Charleston Police First War. Mother Emanuel sits right downtown Charleston, half a mile away from historic Fort Sum um, Sumter, where civil wars for shots were fired. Mother Emanuel sits on Calhoun Street, right in the middle of Charleston Historical District. It is the city's main tourist thoroughfare. The police department sits on the Broad Street, blocks away from the church. Broad connects to Meeting Street, that leads directly to Calhoun Street. Chumley, skinny person, outwits Homeland Security, and the Charleston PD, multi-billion, well million, dollar, active shooter program. So between June 15th and 19th this year, Department of Homeland Insecurity's Federal Law Enforcement Training Center was conducting active shooter threats instructor training program in Charleston. Let's see. The course of the description goes as follows. The course takes active shooter threat tactics training to the next level by emphasizing leadership, teachbacks, adult learning, as well as traditional technical skills needed in field training, officers, special agents. It is absolutely bizarre that with Charleston Police Department and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security blocks away developing implementing active shooter threat programs that this one skinny person took his sweet time to mass murder nine people in a historic church in the middle of town tourist thoroughfare and casually just walk away from the crime scene get into his car parked right directly in front of the church's parking lot and then drive away from the city and out of state. Chumley, his entire nation, should ask where were the 21st century multi-million dollar protect and serve guys and the multi-billion dollar technically advanced federal government interdepartmental U.S. Department of Homeland Security where nine citizens were being laid to west down the street. How did this skinny person outwit the entire Charleston Police Department and the U.S. government to be literally tracked down and apprehended by one woman, a florist, in North Carolina? Hmm, she says to herself. Moments before the slaughter, 26-year-old Tuanza Sanders 
send out a, sh- a snapshot to friends. Snapshot is an application that users take photos, record videos, text, drawings, and send them to a controlled list of recipients. They send photos and videos known as snaps. First one that went out was No I Love You. It was a sign of the devil in the details. Or the mudra of gird your loins. Basically. It's not called that, but that's basically what it means. Um, you know, beside the piggy finger, those two fingers down. That's what it means. But sign of the horns again. Anna Lucius. Anyway. He sent these out. Wanza. I have a picture of uh, with his band of brothers, all except the young man um, wearing pink pants, certainly appears to be flashing hand signals, as you can see. Now, Juan says hand si- symbol would be more dangerous of the two Masonic symbols. They're Masonic, but they're also ancient mudras, so they could be good and bad, of course. Now, in Wanza's video snap from Bible study, he's captured a picture of Dylan Roof before the carnage. The banner he placed above this snapshot was Bible study, knowledge, planter. Now, Wanza was bonded with a small group of males that called themselves a band of brothers. Wanza, Torrance, Tyrone, Shaw, um, Dominic Gray, T.J. Grant had been very f- close friends and partners for over a decade. They were all about fun and games. Wanza had been told by one of the brothers, Tyrone Shaw, that was thinking about settling down with the young girl he had been talking to. Oddly enough, at 26 years old, he wasn't reported to have had a girlfriend at that point. It also appears that the band of brothers had not yet seen her. Wanza received the Vulcan sign, also Brotherhood of Satan. <laughs> One of the bands of brothers dressed in some sort of brown type military shirt, police attire. Brown shirts come to mind. Interesting to see. But the knowledge planter in the context of the Bible study group is rather unique language and a very strange code. The language also fits a particular set of circumstances in the Xbox action adventure video game called um, the Xylon Showdown. Now in this game the players are able to play as Xylon apprentices and one of the game's objectives is to get Shen Gu Wu, Shen Gu Wu, fictional, fictional mystical artifacts basically that possess magical powers. The Shen Gu Wu require the use of Qi energy from the player. There are six playable characters in the game. One of the characters is Chase Young. Chase Young is a renegade. Xiao, oh, Xiao Lin, monk turned evil, basically. Exchange for superhuman strength and immortality. He made his deal with the devil. Chase was one of the former Xiaolin warriors and a near Xiaolin dragon. Chase um, served as a continuous um, villain to the Xiaolin monks. Now, Knowledge Planter has been found in the footsteps of Chase Young. This encounters with a mystical figure called Capron. K 
Cape Run was once a noble shaman who could guide the beast spirits to the afterlife, but a plague corrupted a guidance ritual. His heart became tainted. tainted. The mystical Kreplan would walk in the shroud of the shadows mode. Where's my nerds at? We may have to play this game and see how bad it is. Anyway, in the footsteps of Chase, he searched for Kaplan. He was still there. This certainly wasn't happening. Knowledge planter, knowledge power, knowledge grower. Kaplan waved, uttered, waving his staff. So it hit all the ancient ones. So, Dylan Roof, in the footsteps of Chase Young, in the shrouded, in the shroud of the shadows moat. In this concept, some of the church members involved in the Bible study group have to have been knowledge planters that were evil, and during Ruth's plant in the home of the childhood friend, um, Jerry Meeks, Ruth had consumed, been consumed with playing Xbox games. Some of these guys may have been friends or at least mind controlled together and played together. In fact, he wore the same stained gray t-shirt that they wore the day of the massacre while playing Xbox at Meek's home. Undoubtedly, there is more going on at Mother Emanuel's in the Shroud of Shadows mode than in plain and ordinary Bible study, because these people are linked, possibly mind controlled and triggered. Know that you do not have to be in the military. You do not have to be a super soldier now. They can give you all the knowledge you need. They can make you do all the things they do from remote. Right? Got me? Okay. So, Richard Allen, 1760 1831, founder and first bishop of the AME Church, was a free and accepted Mason elected by the right worshipful Grand Master Prince Hall, subservient to the Grand Lodge of England. There should be little doubt that over the years Mother Emanuel served the community duly in duality. A Christian church, the secret haven, Luciferian Masonic Lodges. And I have a picture up there, again, former pastor, was absolutely shameless Masonic Luciferian on the church pulpit, 33 degree Prince Hall, Master Mason, and again, that's, I have a picture right next to him showing the hand signals. Now, the Master Demon, the pulpit, former pastor, Reverend Laverne on uh, Witherspoon, 33 degree Prince Hall Mason and Chaplain. Witherspoon is the U.S. Army Chaplain, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Fort Monmouth is home to the Army's Communications and Electronics Command that I have let, mentioned to you before, directly linked to Boz Allen, 9 11, Inside Job, Artificial Technology psychotropics, mind control, remote skull to computer broadcasting. Reverend Prickney had been installed as, as pastor in 2010, primary as useful, expendable U.S. military intelligence patsy for the CIA mind control MKUltra covert experiment Xbox Manchurian Candidate Mind Control Program Roof waited until the nine the ninth hour to kill. And there has there just happens to be nine satanic sat um statements of intent. I'm not gonna read them. But you can look them up. 
it's interesting when these numbers come up. So, just so happened that the number of the mother's church victims were nine. Wasn't a coincidence. Nine is a ritual number that the victims and their black societies of secrecy clearly understand. Now, we've talked about the number nine before, but Satan's Satanists and the number nine. Now again, for anyone who wants to hang out a little longer, I will be finishing this today. So I don't have to go into it next week. But there's a couple things probably coming up on this weekend. And before my show, that I just would like you to keep this in mind. Because there's some dates that things look fishy. And we could not have had us cyber glitch attack like yesterday and again two planes falling out of the sky in Canada there's something going on anyway Satanists take the lights in the number nine several reasons first they enjoy the reversal the mirroring the inversion symbols letters and numbers right when you turn the number nine upside down you get a six which makes up the number of the beast, the 666, the carbon, as in revealed about Revelation, the Bible. Second, they take perverse pleasure in commemorating the death of Christ. The death of Christ is associated with the number nine. In Mark, it was revealed that Christ spoke his last words on the cross Calgary at nine at the nine hour and gave up the ghost. That's what he said. He gave up the ghost so he died. Now during the nineteen hundreds, the black elite, so descendant of House Negroes basically, the Negro um, bourgeoisie, they were the real old black families uh, mostly came up here because they're not stupid. Now, they were secretly initiated into subservient, higher socio-economic, political, closed caste, secret societies, separated from the masses by their traditional white secret elite Masonic overlords. The establishment of the so-called Black Greek lettered fraternities, sororities, were modeled after the Illuminati Greek lettered societies, which are bound by blood oath, secrecy, initiation rites, marks of the beast, the saint as their superiors, their white counterparts, their um, Freemasonry, the Tem Knights Templar. The nine historically black Greek letter organizations, these societies were established to make up a national pan Hellionic council, which we've talked about. Now, collectively, they are called the Divine Nine. According to the book Numbers, they're called Power and Mystic Virtues. Nine holds great significance amongst the Masonic Orders and the Secret Society there are Masonic Order of Nine Elected Knights in which nine roses nine lights nine knocks are used in fact the number nine is the number of the earth under evil influences now Dr. Rob Morris founder of the Order of the Eastern Star. He was a Master Mason and a Knight Templar. Um, Louisville um, Commentary. Dr. Morris drafted the Constitution of the Grand Encampment of Knights Templar of the United States and that of the Grand Lodge of Kentucky. Dr. Morris was no joke. 
through 19th century, he ranked amongst the likes of Albert Pike as one of the most foremost authorities and prophets of the Knights Templar and of Freemasonry in the States. At the time the OS was formed, Dr. Morris appointed a five-pointed star pentagram, again, sign of the mother, which was stolen, as a logo for the OES. He knew very well that he had been informed of such, that the five-pointed star with one point down was an emblem used as the goat of Mendes, the Baphomet, Turn it upside down, it's a woman's sign. Sign of most of the plants on this planet. Sign of most of the animals on this planet. That's how it's usually used. But, up like this, Mendes, and its mystical significance is when we've been told is evil. We'll keep it at that. Now, the phrase, the Eastern Star, and yeah, I know these people too, has a specialized meaning in occultism. It refers to the star Sirius. It is the most significant star in all the ancient religions, from Kemet, from al Kebulan that was passed on. It is sacred to the god Set. Remember Set the god who killed Osiris. Set is probably the oldest form of the sun set. The eastern star is the sun set. Star of set. So that's serious. It's night time. Susie Jackson, age 87. Tuanza, Sanders' aunt, sister of secrets. So she was an active member, a matron of the Eastern Light number, chapter number 360, Order of the Eastern Star, OES, Mother of All. OES are Masonic Blue Lodges that practice Masonic rituals and know the Order of the Nine. The OES was founded 1868 as a women's auxiliary for the Masonic Lodge. It's open to all female relatives of Masons only and functions under the authority of the Masonic Lodge. Master Mason, called the Worthy Patron, must be present at all meetings. There is also another Mason, an Associate Patron, usually present. Otherwise, the offices are held by women. But again, this is the fall to the patriarchy and this is the second or third hand of this there must be a guy over fishing overseeing what should have been women's rights anyway but as much as I love honor and respect our elders she is at the center of a Masonic family she rides the goat We have Nathan, um, Nathaniel Simmons, 74 years old, ministerial staff member of the church, a member of the Divine Nine, Phi Beta Sigma, died at the shooting as well. His daughter, um, Arcelia Simmons, confirmed to ABC News, Simmons was a brother of secret, so he was a veteran, World War II veteran of oh, Vietnam aggression, so slaughter. Returned home from Vietnam with a purple heart. Phi Beta Sigma, founded in 1914, Howard University, over 90% of the founders of Phi Beta Sigma and Divine Nine fraternities and sovereignties were Prince Hall Masons, Masonic matrons, again, Oh, yes. It certainly appears that Simmons has on an Albert Pike Scottish Rite double headed eagle, 32 or 33rd degree necktie. 
he would be the Masonic father of all of the black Satanic family. With the Master Mason presiding over the AME Bible class, it becomes a blue lodge then, because that's what happens. Now, do I think they really realize what they're doing? Most probably don't. And if they think they're following Satan and that they're equal to their white brotherhood, they really don't. And, well, they're dead. So for my brothers and sisters out there joining this stuff, know that the, it was always set up to use you by this. You were never their favorites. You were their house pets. You still are. Nothing but their house pets. And all we could ever be to these beings is entertainment. We will not be equal to them. We will not be their brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if we're the, the same color as them. We are not the same. And they will never look at you as the same. We got that? Okay, so, Brother of Secrets, Distinguished Member of the Nine, who was first initiated into the um, Masonic Lodge, APA, Pseudo Masonic Organization, that is certainly controlled by Masons. A lot of these are step down things. He wrote the history of APA. 1929 updated it with new additions Wesley was also what they call an archon so demon a sigma phi pi phi so bule yeah they, the bules call themselves archons lovely and first of the black Greek letter organizations he was a prince hall freemason a sovereign grand inspector general 33rd degree of the united supreme council okay we'll say goodbye to everybody who wants to go and i'll see who wants to uh, hang out and hear the rest thanks guys love you